Welcome everyone to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about dating, romantic relationship, and much more. Because if we look at the world and dating and how men are and how women are, there are so many issues, there's so many problems, and we need to find a solution. Because if we're just going to allow the divorce rate to keep on rising and for more single parent households to occur, or for more women to say, I don't want a relationship, I'm just going to get a dog and die alone. Or men just saying, I'm not going to have a relationship. I mean, there's so much about relationships that are happening right now that many people are not happy with. And right now, the dating world is, I'm going to go out and have my fun, build up my body count, and I don't care about the consequences. But we do have to realize that there are going to be consequences for our actions, whether we have positive actions or we have negative actions. We need to understand what it is like for our future. And today I'm going to be bringing on a relationship coach. She does a lot of women empowerment coaching with women who are trying to step into their feminine side. And right now we have a world full of women who are very masculine. And we need to make sure that we are understanding that if they want to be masculine, then they're going to be treated like men, right? There's a saying, right? If you hit a man, be expected to be hit like a man, right? Because we can easily say that a man shouldn't hit a woman. Rightfully so, right? Because men are typically biologically bigger. But with the whole movement of uh, co ed sports, so like if you're trans, you can be in any sport looking at swimming, right? There's a swimmer who, Leah something, was a male who then all of a sudden is now female. And he went from being like 200, 400, 200, 300, 400 place or something like that. And then all of a sudden, now he's winning women's competitions. So there is a battle of the sexes, but it doesn't mean that the battle of the sexes have to be like this. Because what the battle of sexes might be is not so much, oh, I need to have equality, I need to do this, I need to do that. But rather, what type of relationship do I want to have with a man or with a woman, the heterosexual type of mentality? The thinking like, I'm looking for someone to be in my life rather than I'm just going to move through life and it doesn't matter how many bodies I go through. You can slay as many bodies as you want, but do you slay your passion? Do you slay your purpose? Do you slay your opportunities for growth and betterment? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But regardless of what you're doing right now, we need to tighten things up. And today I'm going to be bringing out my guest, Charlene Byers, who's going to be helping us understand relationships, woman empowerment, and the way we should be thinking instead of the way we are thinking today. So let's get into the interview with Charlene and myself. Welcome, Charlene Bryce, to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you for having me. I'm really actually excited to have this conversation (laughs) with you today. Yeah, me too. And I was so excited when I found you on Podbatch because I was like, I've been wanting to talk to someone just like you because the work that you do is so important right now because you are a women's empowerment coach. And you don't just do that, you do much more. But I'm not going to tell your whole bio today because I'm going to allow you to do that right now. Oh, fabulous. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I am a woman's empowerment coach, but I actually specialize in romantic relationships and dating. And, you know, I, I'm in a position right now that, you know, I've been doing this work for a long time. And I realized, you know, after doing this for a long time, even though women would come to me for like different, different things in their life. So as an empowerment coach, I, I help women in different areas of their life. And so I noticed as the years were going by, I was, you know, able to help women in different areas of the life. But the one thing that really just kept coming back, no matter what, like no matter what we were talking about was relationships and men and men. And I realized that, okay, there's something here. And um, based on not only that, the reason why I knew that I love this work and what I'm doing, what I'm doing now is because it also ties into my own personal journey. And, you know, me being a woman that I felt very disempowered for forever when it came to, you know, relationships, myself, like, what what do you do? How do you how do you meet good men? And I found myself as a person, you know, really struggling in that area. And I wanted to know that there was a different way. I wanted to know that, you know, it was possible to have some amazing relationships and not deal with what I was dealing with. So that's how this started. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actually helping people, women, 
And I work with men too, believe it or not. I do work with men. Um, I have personally, I have four boys. So I love, <laughs> I have such a different understanding with them. I've been raising kids for a long time. My oldest is like 30, and she's 31. So I have this, you know, understanding, I would say, really when it comes to romantic relationships and in terms, and today I would like to speak more about, you know, heterosexual. So meaning, you know, heterosexual woman and heterosexual male. And so that's what I'm helping women now. So I'm helping women when it comes to really aligning themselves from the beginning with, you know, the right person, because that's what it comes down to. It really does. When we're talking about romantic relationships and we're talking about, you know, in the terms of like what makes them thrive, what makes them last, you know, all that, it actually comes down to who you choose from the beginning. And studies have shown actually 95% success of romantic relationships will come down to who you choose in the beginning. So that's why I feel that this work is so important because that was me. Prior to now, you know, I'm remarried now. I have actually a really awesome relationship. And relationships don't just happen, right? They don't just happen. You got you to gotta work on this. You got to work on relationships. And things are different now. Things are different now than where they were when I used to, you know, be in a relationship back in the day, I was married. I was actually married for 23 years. And I ended up, I have a whole story on, you know, I was married and I had to, you know, I left my ex-husband because I realized with you with someone and you're in a romantic relationship and things are not aligned. The only thing as a human being actually can really do is, you know, look inward and, and see how they're showing up. But you can't change another person. You actually can't change another person. So that was my situation. I was married to a man that I was very much in love with. I was very much in love with him. And I didn't, I was young. I didn't know, you know, we don't know relationships. We don't, we don't understand this. Come on, you know, we come, we grow up and we're like, you know, go into these relationships and we don't really understand the dynamics. So I attracted, you know, a man that, you know, the, the, the attraction that I was usually used to, which was men that were, believe it or not, you know, not so nice. But that's what I was used to. So, And so looking back, I can see all the red flags. I can see all the things, but I didn't see it then. And so I ended up in this marriage for 23 years. And it was, wow, wow, wow. That's a long time. That's a long time to be with someone and really try to make it work. But being the only person trying to make it work, you know, we actually were in like, therapy, like counseling, check this out. We were actually in counseling for in and out for over 10 years. And I saw myself, I saw myself learning and growing and actually maturing. And, and I saw another human being just wanting to stay the same. So I didn't know this. So this is, this is kind of like why I am doing what I'm doing now, because I really believe that, you know, that we can have freaking amazing relationships because true, like, when you have real alignment with another human being and you're in a romantic relationship and things are good, it really makes your life in such a different piece. When you're in a romantic relationship and things are not good, your life is going to be like stressful. It affects your life. Like our, our relationships with the people we love are so important because it actually affects everything else. And so it's important to have amazing relationships with people we love. And there's no perfect relationship. Of course not. There's no perfect anything. But the, the truth is that there are certain people for certain people. Not everyone, not everyone's going to fit. You know, there's not everyone's going to fit. And really finding out what that is, because we all have our uniqueness and we all have certain things that we want and we desire. And so that's how I start. That's how I help. I know I just went off. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's good to talk about yeah. your story, your past, so the audience can kind of get a good understanding of who you are and where you came yeah. from. Because if they have no understanding of who you are, then it's kind of like, okay, well, she's a women's empowerment coach and she helps people with relationships and their romance life. But what about her, right? And a lot of people don't want to see someone who's perfect. They want to see someone who has went through the ringer and learned yeah. from their mistakes. And that I think that's why many people become coaches. Because yeah. they have went through some type of hardship and they want to make sure it doesn't happen as much in the future as it yes. did in our life. So if we can mitigate it, we do that. And you said a lot of great things there. In the beginning, you were young. You didn't know any better. I didn't and know any better. 
most people, they don't. They don't know any better. They just kind of say, well, I got my high school sweetheart. We're going to get married. We're a perfect fit. And then somewhere down the line, there's a discrepancy, whether it's you grow apart or you realize that you weren't paying attention to one of the most essential things that a relationship needs. And that's an understanding of your values. Because if you don't know the other person's values, then it's going to be very easy for that relationship to tear apart. And that is what happens a lot in relationships today. That is what happens. Yep. They are so quick to look at the superficial things. For example, they might see the money. They might see the exterior. The exterior stuff. Exterior, the the beauty, right? All of that, right? The superficial things, the things that fade away, maybe, or the things that could be lost. So when those things are gone, what is keeping us there? Similar to how if you have a rowboat next to the dock, do you tie it to the dock or do you just allow it to, you know, basically be there with no rope to the dock? eventually is going to drift away. You have to have a tie there keeping you connected. And if you don't, eventually you're going to drift apart. So it's important that we understand those values. And the question I wanted to ask you is, how do you help someone find their values and understand them? One of one of the main things that I do when it comes to that is, is not to me when I'm working with people like really wanting to or desiring a romantic relationship, because that's what I'm not talking about friendships. You know, there's all types of different relationships. I'm specifically today, again, talking about romantic relationships. And when I work with women, one of the main questions that I ask them is, how do you want to feel in a relationship? How do you want to feel with a man? Because when we, when we slow things down and we really realize what it is that we want to feel, because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to a certain feeling, like a, what you want to feel, right? Because again, when we talk about the external stuff, like all that goes away. That just goes away. As I said, is how do you want to feel? And how do you want to feel in a romantic relationship? And how do you want to feel with a man? And when I ask this question, to women. And I've actually asked this particular question to over a hundred. I mean, like I, we're at what, 300. I mean, so many women I think we're at like 398 or like a kind of crazy number like that. And when I've asked this question, there's a common theme that I'm hearing from, from women when they say this, because this is how it starts. This, this is how you find out what it is that you truly value and what it is that you really want. You got to know what you want to feel. So a lot of women say to me, Charlene, I want to feel safe. I want to feel safe. I want to feel safe with the man. And I want to feel not only just protected, but I want to know that this, you know, like he has my back. You know, we have my back. And another thing that I hear that, you know, women often tell me is, you know, I want to be seen. I want to be seen. I want to be seen for who I am. Like I, I want them to see me. And that's such an important thing for women. You know, the one want to be seen. And then the third thing that I often hear is, and I totally get this one, is they say, I want to be taken care of, like taken care of. And they're not talking necessarily like finances or anything like that. They're talking about true alignment with someone that they feel that that person completely wants, chooses, and wants them. And that is one of the main, so the main, main one besides all that, that I hear the most is women want to feel chosen. They want to feel chosen. They want to feel desired and they want to feel safe. Okay. This is what I'm hearing the most. So when I get to do this with women and I find out what they want, then we start breaking that down. When you ask a young woman what she wants, it's totally different than someone who's ready for a romantic relationship. Because in the beginning, when they're young and they want to explore the world and they want to live their life, They might say that they want maybe someone who's going to provide them the lifestyle that they are looking to live. So maybe of glamour, uh, you know, traveling to different exotic places. And then it comes to a time in their life where they're like, okay, I'm finally ready to settle down. Why do you think when women are younger, they have that type of mindset, but when they get a little bit older, they are ready for that romantic relationship or true romantic relationship where they can feel safe rather than taken care of? Because I think what happens is, is women, you know, when we're young, we get in these relationships, we're not even, like you said, we're not even thinking about, we're getting relationships. And then we end up in these relationships that don't work out. We end up in relationships that are very toxic. We end up in relationships that, you know, it is just beyond chaos. So it's almost like they, a lot of women, the younger ones, like that was me, 
we go through these relationships because we're not thinking all these things. And once you have that type of heartbreak, once you have that type of toxic relationship, once you go through that, and now you find yourself single, you are as a woman, and usually this is this is my this is what I've noticed. You're now questioning things completely different now. Now you're like, oh, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> and sometimes it, it's sometimes when you're young, that's what happens. That's exactly what's happening. Sometimes you just have to go through it. You have to go through it, you know, because when you're young, there's a difference between now, what the work that I'm doing with women now, I call it second time around. <laughs> second time around, I'm like, listen, <laughs> you know, there, there's, we're still, we're, we're not in our 20s anymore. I'm 50 years old and I still feel as a 50 year old woman that I'm just starting my second half. I'm like, I, you know, like you, I'm like, I don't feel too old. I actually worked with a woman that was 92 years old, swear to God. And she found love for the first time in her life. I'm like, okay, if this 92 year old woman can find love and have alignment, then any of us can. So that's what happens when we're young. That happens with all kinds of things when we're young. We make, you know, choices that in the end don't really serve us. But I think that has a lot to do with being young. I really do. Because I think if someone would have talked to me when I was in my 20s and really trying to, the, the, the mindset that I was in at the time and, and the chaotic world that I was living in, I mean, they would have to completely, I would have had to go to someone and say, I need help. But if I didn't do that when I was young, I always feel like we're like, like we're in the jungle, you know, we're like, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So it takes it sometimes, unfortunately, unfortunately, it takes for you to go through it to realize, oh, this is not going to work. But that's not what I'm doing now. So now I'm working with women that are, like I said, second time. Like they're like, okay, Charlene, I already got, you know, I already had the marriage. I have the kids. I have the career. I'm, I'm like, I have all that. But really what I'm truly desiring now is like a real partner, you know, like someone I can, you know, really have, you know, a relationship with and have passion with and have a, a real commitment. And I don't want to, I, this is what I hear. This is what I hear. I don't want to do life for the rest of my life by myself. I want real connection. I'm good being by myself. I've been by myself for years, girl. <laughs> this is what they tell me. They're like, I've been good. But now I'm at a place right now that I can't find some good men. And what is up, Charlene? Are there any good men out there? So that's what's happening right now. And I agree. The embodied wisdom is so central, especially like when you're coming out of your teen years, you have that mindset of, well, I know everything. I yeah. mean, even for men, like we are going down that path. Like I got yep. my crew, I got my gang. We're yep. good. We can handle anything. But in reality, they don't even have the resources. They don't have the mindset. They don't have the world knowledge to handle it. And the same thing I'm sure is true for women in their teenage years because they're living life for the first time. They're learning about relationships, romance, yeah. and yeah. it's almost like a trial and error. And when they finally yes. get to that point now where they're looking for romance, they have spent so many years maybe being independent. The transition from that, having that independent mindset to looking for a romantic partnership, do you find it's more difficult for a woman who has an independent mindset to look for a romantic relationship? No, what, what I find what is difficult <laughs> is that we as human beings, we um, are born, <laughs> and this is what happens. I'm going to break this down when it comes to this. So we're, as, as human beings, we're born, and we're born into whoever we're born into. We're either born into a mother and a father, caregiver, just a mom, just a dad, um, whatever our dynamics are, it is what it is. And so you get born and you are this beautiful little baby and everything is just amazing, right? And everything's great. And you don't, you don't have, you know, anxiety. You don't have all the things that happen to us. That's, that's not, that's not the reality of you. You're just this pure, I always say it's like this golden Buddha. Okay. Then this is what happens. Life happens from about, literally from when you're about born to about seven years of age, okay? And this is what's going to happen. Whatever is happening in your environment. So if you're, if you're used to like people yelling and screaming and chaos, your nervous system is starting to get wired, okay? You're literally starting to get wired. So you're, you're, that's something that you're like, oh, you know, it's not necessarily it's what you want. It doesn't even matter. It's what your nervous system starts happening. So you take all this stuff and all the things that you grew up with and what you believed and what you saw about relationships. So did you see like two people 
really having love and respect for each other. So that's what you knew was true. Or did like me, did you see, you know, um, chaos? Did you see craziness? Did you see, you know, men and women completely disrespect each other? Did you see like me, you know, men having no respect for women and just being in their machismo? Like, is that what you saw? Is that what you experienced? You know, I come from a culture, my, I'm, full-blooded Cuban. So you're soy Cubana. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very spicy woman. But when I was a little girl, the culture and the things that I saw did not align with me. I was like, what is up? So this is what happens. So then you're young. And I say, you just come out of the jungle. So you go out into the world. you literally go, go out into the world. And you're going to base things on what you just dealt with your last however many years. And how your nervous system got wired. That's what you're going to be used to. So I was used to, believe it or not, you know, men that were, that that weren't nice. I was used to men, you know, being very disrespectful. I really swear to you, believed (laughs) for the longest time, that's how men were. And so when I, when I realized what the question that you asked me, you have to be able to get under the hood. And find out what are your patterns and why you believe what you believe. And is it true? Because I tell women, I said, you know, if you believe, if you really believe that all men are assholes, honestly, like like, all men are assholes. Okay, cool. If you really believe that, what do you think is going to reflect back to you? Because men mirror what we believe. And so if you believe that men are jerks, then that's what you're going to make sure that gets attracted back to you. So that's what happened to me. So I had to do some deep work and I had to get under and figure out why do I believe what I believe and is it true? And how those limiting beliefs were really keeping me stuck for so many years and and keeping me in in toxic relationships because I believe that relationships were hard. I believe that men and women fight. But guess what? That's not true. Relationships don't necessarily need to be hard. And men and, and men and women don't need to fight. Women, men and women can actually, believe it or not, and that's what I have now, have disagreements. There's no perfect. You can have a disagreement, but you can calm down and make sure that you're with someone that can have a different disagreement with you and they're going to calm down and you don't have to get in this crazy big old fight anymore. That's it. That's what has to happen because you have to be able to understand why do I keep getting in these type of relationships? Like, why are things so hard? Because a lot of people want to blame the other person. And I want to say something right now. Any romantic relationship, any relationship, it takes two people. It literally takes two people to have a relationship. So when I hear people say, oh my goodness, it was him and it was him and he's this 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 and he's this. Okay. What about you? What about you? And wait a minute, let me ask you even another question. If it's that bad and you've tried everything and you're showing up and you're being the kindest, most sweetest person and you're doing all this, why, what, you need to honor yourself. Why, why are you with someone that, that you feel so terrible with that has no love and respect for you? Honor, honor yourself because you can't change a person. So that's why you got to take your time. You got to take your time. This is what I wanted to say something. You asked me a question and it just came to me. <laughs> I don't know what question you asked it. You have to be able to understand something. It actually takes time to get to know someone. It actually takes time, okay? This whole thing of when we first meet someone, boom, and you have that chemistry with, is that real? Yes, of course that's real. But what we believe, this is what I say. This is why I, this is why I say slow this down and understand this and position yourself differently. Because what we believe who that person is, is not necessarily who there is. I always say I, we have this like picture, picture frame of what we think who you are. But if you give it time, if you give it time and you learn how to get to know someone and then you can start relying on them. And then when you rely on them and then you commit and then when you commit, you know, there's there's process of to really getting to know someone. So if you have been in a relationship before and I don't it doesn't matter. I don't care if you've been in. I don't know how many relationships you're like, ah, I'm just not having the best luck. Good relationships are meant for anyone. It's just really like learning how to understand yourself and understanding what your boundaries are and what you're willing to put up with or not put up with. Because if you're a woman, you're like, I don't want to be in a relationship with a man that just has so much disrespect. Well, guess what? You get to choose. You actually have choices. You have choices. No one's stuck with anybody. 
Let me just tell you this one more time. You're not stuck with anybody because if you're in a relationship that is toxic, you're not stuck. <laughs> I liked how you explain the idea of childhood development. I'm a teacher, so I know all about childhood development. I know all about psychology. I know about all of the building blocks background. of the brain. Yeah. So yes, and, and, the way, and the way you explain it is very fun. I do it in a fun way so people can hear it. I don't, I, I don't go in the technical because sometimes people are like, what is she talking about? I have to do it light. Yeah, and I mean, I do it very quickly. We talk about just the two stages first, then we go to the next two, and then we go to the top. And so it's very quick. We, and then I do it all the time. I do it on a lot of episodes, but since you already did it, I'm going to let it be because you did a great job. Oh, and thank you. now just looking at that, right? So we looked at what's under the hood and we build up until we finally get to that part where we're looking to that romantic relationship. Why do you think now we might find a romantic relationship, but here in America, divorces typically initiated by the majority of women rather than men. Do you think it's because women see their value more than men or is it because that they understand that, all right, I'm not happy quicker than men? I think what's happening is people, women and men are rushing into relationships and not giving it the time that it needs, period. What I think what's happening is, is women, and it's not their fault, it's because they, we haven't had this dialogue. Women don't know how to position themselves and date because dating is all about getting to know different people. When you actually take your time and you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you literally don't have any expectations and realize you're just going to get to know different people. When you look at it like that, you position yourself that you actually start relaxing a little bit. You're chilling out because you don't have to go on these. This is what's happening right now. Women go on like these dates as if they're on a job interview. And they're always like, I'm going to check off all the boxes. You know, is, is he husband material? Is he a serial killer? Is he all this? And they're up. No, seriously. And they're like, yeah. you're going to kill me. You're going to kill me. I'm like, mama, you ain't going to kill you. Not all the men are going to kill you. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I know about that. So it's, yes. it's very important for that aspect to be thought about too, because what's happening now is I know women are very quick to enter a relationship and being more physical. So yeah. it's not that's just, I said, don't, let's not go there. <laughs> so instead of just going to the physical, because maybe yes. you think that's what you should do, having the relationship part, getting to know someone, building that relationship, I think is, is going to be essential. This is, this is the deal. So the women that I work with, the women that I'm working with are what I call, if like, we're going to get into, we're gonna, now we're talking, remember, we're talking about romantic relationships. I'm going to get into polarity. I'm going to get into polarity because you need the polarity to have it romantic. Because I don't want to talk about friendships. That's not what I do. I help women get exactly desire. They desire romantic relationships. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm tired of people saying, oh, you don't need, I'm like, stop. <laughs> it's not about not meaning. It's about wanting. Like, seriously, it's about wanting. And, and, you know, it's so interesting. Usually people tell other people, um, oh, don't worry about it. And they're usually in the relationship. Like, seriously, like, like, okay. So in romantic relationships, what's happening is, is that women have had to, it's just how society is now. Women have had to now be in positions that they're doing it all. They're doing it all. Okay. They're running their own household. They're working full time single mamas and they're go, 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 busy, busy, busy. And they're, they're doers, right? They're doers. They're getting it done. They're this and they're that. So they're constantly, constantly, you know, working, working, work mode, work mode, work mode. They actually don't even know how to just take a deep breath and relax. And so what happens is, is they take that energy the working, 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 the busy, busy, busy and figuring it out and, and being up in here, being up in your head, right? It's very masculine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's a very masculine way to do things, okay? So when a woman is up in her head and she's very masculine, she's actually not in touch, which is our actual superpower as a woman, which is our feminine, which is our intuition, which is our body, because we're that's, that's what we were, we're here to receive. We, we, we just know, okay? But if we're up in here and we're not in touch in here, you actually do things that you're not even wanting. You actually say yes when you want it, when you want it to say no. And you say no when you want it to say yes. You get yourself confused because you're not trusting yourself. So one of the most important things that I help women is 
get back into feminine embodiment. Okay. It, it truly is an essential, but it's a forgotten skill. And because when women are able to get back into their embodiment and their superpowers, they're able to understand without having to ask the good. Because let me tell you guys something. Anybody can say anything they wanted to say. They can, they can talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. You know what I mean? They can say, I'm amazing. I'm a perfect person. I'm a, what? <laughs> you know, you have to be able to slow things down, really get in touch with, hmm, you'll know, you'll know. You know why people, women don't know is because they're here. They're not trusting themselves. They're not trusting themselves. It's, it's too much. It's too busy, busy, busy. And how are you going to, so they take that energy into a romantic, you know, relationship. So they go out guys. Okay. And so, and I'm what I tell you how women want to feel. We want to be desired. We want to feel chosen. We want to feel loved. We want to be respected. We want to be pursued. Okay. So what happens? So you take, you take that energy, that masculine energy, and then you go and you go on a date with the guy. Okay. And, and this is what's happening. Then you have women. And again, it's not their fault. They don't know what they're doing. And you have women that are basically ball busting guys. They're like, you know, what do you do? How you doing? What do you do? And they're not getting what they are really longing for. So it's so important to not only understand really the dynamics of polarity and how that is romantic. Because let me say something. If you have two, like, so let's say you, you're in your masculine energy, right? And and, you, and usually, again, we're talking heterosexual. Usually the men that I work with and, and men in general, they really identify more with masculine, okay? And usually women, they usually identify more with feminine. You know, look, look at, so let me tell you what masculine and feminine is. So you go into, look at, if you're in a bedroom, Look at the woman's side of her nightstand and then look at a man's nightstand, okay? A woman's nightstand, you know, she's she's more into the feminine. So she's more into the colors, the smell, the feel good, the lotions, the warm, the fuzzies, okay? that, that That's very feminine. It's very, you know, and colorful and all this stuff. You look at the man, nothing wrong with that. You, he has the phone, maybe a light, <laughs> and, you know, there's a couple little things. He's good to go. There's difference in the energies and there's difference in in what we're attracted to. So I always help them slow it all down. Find out first what is polarity and and how that really plays a part and how, and and it's called, it's it's really, it's, it's really the dance. It's not called games. No, I don't play, I don't teach people how to play games. I actually teach people how to show up their true authentic self. No, it's called the dance. That's what, hello. That's what dating is for. It's the dance. It's the dance. It's the dance. It's a dance. Okay. And so when you're able to learn the dance and you have the fun and you go and you're talking to different people at a time, because this is the deal. This is what happens. So a woman is, um, let's say on a dating app and I teach women, I teach women that dating apps are just a tool, like calm down, like stop saying, Oh, I'm like, what? How are you going to meet so many? How are you going to meet people? Like it's not, it's not the same anymore. Can you meet somebody? going to the gym. Absolutely. Can you meet someone going to the grocery store? Absolutely. But you still got to get to know them and still got to, you know, see who they are. So dating apps are such an awesome tool because you're just getting to know people. (laughs) You don't have to commit to anybody. You don't owe anybody anything. Are you kidding me? You just need to show up who you are. Have a good time. I completely agree with the idea of how sometimes you can get into a different mindset. So if you're a woman, you might get into that masculine mindset and it's not conducive to being in that romantic relationship of a heterosexual couple. You just can't have two masculine energies. It's going to be very difficult for that relationship to go on because there's going to be tension. Maybe he does something and she's misindependent or she's like, well, I'm gone because I can take care of myself. I can do everything myself. I don't need help. Society has been giving women today role models. So we look at like all of our mainstream pop artists, uh, hip hop artists, things like that. Those are the examples that women see. They don't necessarily see the feminine woman anymore because they're not front and center anymore. So we do need to see more women stepping into their feminine energy, but it's very difficult when society is making it prominent that you have all these boss babes. There's nothing wrong with being a boss babe, but then having that masculine energy in a romantic relationship, it creates a discrepancy. It does. And again, it depends 
that's why I go back to the beginning. And I have to ask women the question because I need to know if they're a feminine essence woman. And I need to know what is happening. And society has actually told us the more you do, the more successful you are, the happier you're going to be. But the reality is, is connection is what we truly long for. And it doesn't mean I'm a very successful woman. Let me just make this very clear. I'm a really successful woman and I can be in my masculine energy, but I also know how to shift it into my feminine when it comes to my romantic relationship. Okay. And so I run a business, I run a full coaching business and my husband also runs the business with me. And so I, I'm, so I, I know this in all the levels. Okay. Because I, I know as a woman that, you know, my husband, the, the, the reason why we work and the reason why we have this, you know, true alignment is because we have under, first of all, we met each other and we took our time to really see, you know, who we really are. We did. We took our time. We're like, who, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And during when I was, when I was dating him, I was dating other guys. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. But this is the one, this is the one in time that I realized, wow, woof, this man is solid. Like he wasn't, he wasn't in a position to try to compete with me. He wasn't trying to change me. I'm not trying to change him. He actually wanted to enhance my life and I wanted to enhance his. So we were able to, you know, shift this because we learned, we really learned and I'm learning and I still, I do it every day. You guys, I learn how to be, you know, when I'm in my, I put my work, my work mode on and I work, 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 but I'm also learning how to also shift and do that in, in more in a feminine way, because a lot of people think that feminine is weak. I am so upset about that because that is the opposite. Do you know how powerful, holy, seriously, the feminine energy is? It is literally like so powerful. It's just amazing. So it's not a weakness. It's not a weakness. That's what happens to women because they're such workhorses. And again, there's not, again, that's not their fault. This is what's happening. And and we're not meant to be a workhorse. Like seriously, we're, we're meant to have, you know, more flow, more freedom, more, more just chilling out a little bit. So it's all about learning how to shift your energy. Seriously, it's really learning how to shift your energies and why are you showing up that way? If you have a woman who's in her feminine energy yes. and she's in her romantic relationship, do you believe that she should be submissive to some extent for her romantic partner? Well, why do people have such a hard time with that word? I really want to know this. I, I, mm -hmm. I've i been really trying to figure this one out. Let's unpack it today then, if you Let's want. Let's unpack that word. What mm -hmm. is up with that word? Because I think that, you know, when some, when women think submissive, like it, it it has such a negative, con, right? It's like, it's mm -hmm. like negative. Like all of a sudden you say submissive and, and then you, and literally you turn women off, right? They're like, what the? Mm -hmm. And I actually did it on purpose because of your energy yes. and your mindset. Yes. The reason why I, I'm I'm going down this path is it. It, it yeah. is important. I, I I know it doesn't affect you, but we're just talking about the conversation romantic, and we're okay. talking about these women who are trying to step into their uh, feminine energy, but then yes. they hear that word and they get upset because of that it's word. So and upset. it's important that we unpack it because yes. it's not a word that you have to look at in the way of like your dog or something like that, right? It's mm -hmm. not that. We look at the difference between traditional and modern, okay? And, this, and if we just put it that way, it's, it's very simple to understand. Traditional is going to be the stay-at-home wife type of thing. Mm -hmm. The modern is going to be And there's your, nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing there, wrong with that either. You're right. There is nothing wrong with that. Nope. But then you have your modern, which is going to be your woman who can go out, get her own, similar to how you have your own business, right? Yep. You are self-sufficient, right? Yes. But then you can finally step into a romantic relationship. Do you allow the man to leave? Yes or no? Hell yes. I so love then, it. So, so I then, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I want exactly. to talk about this. I exactly. want to tell women how juicy it, it, this is. Yes. And it's so, juicy. And so the submissiveness is not so much, you're going to do what I say. You're going to no. wear what I want. You're going to go no. where I want. It's not that. Do you allow the man to lead? And yes. sometimes when you're in that masculine energy, you don't allow the man to lead. Or right. you're looking at the submissive part of a relationship and you're like, I'm not going to do that because I'm living my own life and I don't need to compromise because this is my life. It's not yours. Right. And then we're, and those are the women that shouldn't be in relationships because <laughs> that's not going to work. You know, because if you're going to be in relationships again, 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 if you're going to be in a relationship, if you are really, I hope people will hear this. If you're really wanting to be in a romantic relationship, 
make sure that it's actually, you know, truly enhancing your life. There's no need for being in relationships that it is just hell. Oh gosh, no, no, that's not relationships, you guys. Like, let's let's just stay alone. <laughs> let's just stay alone if that's what we're gonna do. Honestly, stay alone. You're gonna be happier, more peaceful. But the truth is, if you want to have a partner, you gotta realize that it's not gonna be just about you. That's just not gonna happen. If you want to be in a relationship with your partner, you have to be able to actually look at your partner and really be with your partner. Because if you're in a relationship, And he's going that way and I'm going that way and we're doing our thing. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like anybody could do that, but that's not what people truly desire. So I work with people that truly desire real intimate connection because connection is what they're looking for. Connection, real connection. And so when we talk about polarity and we talk about the masculine and the feminine energies and we talk about, you know, letting a man lead, the reality is, is that that is such a wonderful (laughs) place for the feminine woman because the feminine woman really doesn't want to be the one that's making all the decisions like you know like seriously making all the decisions protecting the home you know like all of that that that's not that's not my job that's not my job that's not that's not that's not that's not what that's not what's warm and fuzzy for me because when you get into your feminine Really, it goes from you. I literally, it's it's a shift in the energy. So it goes from control to letting go to, you know, completely leaning in and, 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 and wanting to know everything and do everything to actually letting go and being so like going from being so independent, so independent to not being independent, to just being free. And when women allow themselves to just let go of control, They actually really love what comes in return, which will happen is a man. A man is our teacher. I'm telling you, you learn from men, You the good and the bad and the ugly. You just learn, you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn. And so when you're in that position and you're able to just relax and let go and let men lead, you actually get exactly what you really desire. So I think, I think the dialogue, like you said, I love that you said that. I think what's happening is is people are not being honest and what they really desire, okay? What they really desire. And what they really desire is that type of connection. And that's how you get it. Because because like you said earlier, if I'm I'm in my masculine and the man's in his masculine, we can be friends, but we're not going to have polarity. We're we're not going to have polarity together. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's the same thing. I'm talking today about heterosexual relationships, but this goes into every type of relationship. It goes, you know, gay relationships, everything. You always have that polarity. You have to have polarity if we're talking romantic. And the same thing is true if you have a more feminine man yep. and you have a very feminine woman, she's going to be looking for that masculine man and he's not showing up in that area. So then she's going to be turned off in a sense because she's looking yep. for someone who's going to lead, someone who's going to maybe take more initiative. And that's important too, to understand. And what I want to ask you is, in your experience working with your clients, do you find that it's more difficult for a woman to find the man or for a man to find the woman? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I have found, I would honestly say, I really see the shift in both of them because I actually do work with men and and the men that I work with, they are coming to me now and they're saying, Charlie, holy hell, <laughs> Holy hell, what is up with women? They are hard. Holy cow. They are not nice anymore. So I'm noticing that that both parties are struggling. They really are. They're struggling because we're because things are changing and they're not changing in a way that really feels good to us, you know? So we're all kind of like this, like, okay, is this what we're supposed to be doing? <laughs> no, no, you're not supposed to be like, I always tell people, hey, if everyone's going to the right, go to the left. Like, you know, if everyone's going to the left, go to the right. Like, no, 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 no. So yeah, so that's, I think that's what's happening. I can see, I can see the frustration in both. And I really, remember I told you I'm a, I'm a mama of boys? Ooh, I have a lot of conversations with them. I have a lot of conversations with them. They come to me. They come to me with real questions. They come to me. It's so freaking cool. Two are in college. And then I have one in high school. And then I have a girl. There's five. Actually, there's five. I have four boys, one girl. And they come to me. And it's so crazy how things have changed. So my son will be like, okay, mom, you're on speaker. And I'll be talking to like at least like 
literally like eight or nine boys and not boys. I, let me take the back. Young men, young men in their, you know, 20 something. Okay. So Nathaniel, Nathaniel's 21, Chase is 20. So in the twenties. Okay. And they are really struggling with women. And so I have to have certain dialogue with them to really also position them. So women don't take advantage of them. You know what I mean? Like seriously. And I have to, I need to help men. And I talk to my boys and I talk to the boys that are asking me questions and really knowing their worth and understanding like, oh, no, 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 no. She's no, 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 no. If she's doing that, because oh, this is what I tell people, I said, there's jerks and jerks are not um, specific. Like it's, you either can be a jerk and be a male, you can be a jerk and be a woman. They're jerkettes. So that's what I try to tell my boys, you know, like really like it's the same thing, you know, when it comes to relationship, you also have to align yourself with someone. What you said is very important too, because there is different conversations for different age groups. And I know we're talking about the age group that's ready for that romantic relationship. But then also looking at that generation who's not ready, who's maybe just in the dating world, whether it be physical or not physical, they have to understand because they might be in the idea of I'm really in love with this person because they're experiencing this for the first time. So they think that this is love when really it might be attraction or yeah. it could be just, you know, a simple pleasure that they're getting. And they in the brain is saying this feels good. Let's keep it going. But then there might be some negativities that are toxic. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that, because. In the beginning, that's why chemistry, you got to be really, because you, you can, anybody can get chemistry. It doesn't mean, just because you have chemistry with someone doesn't mean that you're going to have, that's your person. It doesn't mean that's alignment. Okay. So chemistry is what screws people. It really, it gets people. Can I say? Okay. So what happens is, is you have to understand what this means. You have to really understand this. So when you first meet someone and you, you have that, that and you, it's real. Like you have that, like with that person, you're woof, I got woof, woof. Got some different chemistry in there. What's happening right now when you have that, when it when it gets flared up, is all these hormones, which we call the feel-good hormones, and these feel-good hormones are starting to come down. The oxytocin, all the hormones are like, Ey! and what those hormones do, they actually, your critical thinking psh, goes out, it goes, bye, critical thinking. This is what it, it actually shrinks your critical thinking. So if you see a brain, if you see a brain that's just kind of normal functioning, it's like, it's all white, it's all clear. Then if you see a brain that's falling in love, that has all those, it's like a little, it's like a juke, it shrinks almost. It's like shrinks because it, it stops your critical thinking. So that's why we have known when it comes to that type of energy, that when it comes to all those, all those feel good hormones, that can last up to 18 months. Think about that. 18 months. And then after 18 months, you're going to be like, oh shit, I'm with the wrong person. That, that's why, seriously. And I'm not saying it takes 18 months to, you know, like get in a committed relationship, but it takes time. I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart. And really, when you think about this, let me, let me say this. Why are people rush this? Because if you slow it down, it's only just a small amount of time that in the big scheme of things, right? So you're like, okay, you know, we were together, you know, I, I recommend too. I'm like, listen, it takes time. And everyone said, well, I just know. I'm like, good. If you just know, then that's Awesome. So give it the time to keep, you know, reinforcing what you know, reinforcing what you know. Give it the time. Just looking at that part, right? So people are quick to rush into relationships, but when they get a little bit older now into and they're into that mindset finally of that romantic. I'm looking for the romantic partner and they take their due diligence. They they make sure they take their time. What would you say is an appropriate time for someone to be in the dating world, meaning dating an individual before they say, this is the guy or this is the girl for me. So that, that I'm going to tell you right now, that's why for you to know, and there's not like a specific time. Okay. And there's not a specific time, but let me just say you guys, seriously, 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 seriously. <laughs> okay. Three months is just three months. Like really like three months goes so fast. So everyone's like, I'm in love in three months. Okay, cool. And, and, and after three months, do people really like have these amazing relationships and they keep getting better and they last? Absolutely. But usually that's where it goes. Dun, dun, dun. So when it comes to time, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. This is, this is it. This is it. Listen loud and clear because it's so awesome. Okay. Not only are you going to take a little time, but you're going to get to know their people and you're also going to put them in front of your people. Okay. Cause this is what's happening. Remember I told you we got that. We got these, we got these, these chemicals going, 
So we're not we're not all there, right? If we're not really totally in touch with ourselves, we're just like, oh, it's different, it's different, it's different, it's different. It's always different. Everyone always says this. Okay. But what you do is you slow it down, you take some time, get around their people. See how they're showing up with their people. See how things are. See who they are. See where what they do. See their life. See their environment. See if it's aligned with you. See if it's like, oh, I like this. Oh, okay, this is different. Or you're like, what is going on? Oh, then get them in front of your people. Because let me tell you something. When you have your people, your people will spot things so quickly that you can't see. And when your people say something to you, people that you love and trust, believe them. Believe them. Because if they're like, oh, hell no, mama, that guy's a narcissist. You, you, the, don't be that girl. Be like, oh, no, it's not. Hello? You're taking the time to find out. Now someone just said, no, that's, that's the narcissist. You're dealing with the narcissist. Run. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what you got to do. You got to like really slow it down, get to know different people. And this is another thing. This, this is what's going to help people not get in wrong relationship. This is, this is why it's key. Remember I said if we were talking to different people at a different time? Think about that. Women go on a date. Okay. They go on a date with the guy and they have a little chemistry with him. Then they go back and they take themselves off of the, the dating app. Okay. They're like, I'm in, this dating the guy. Okay. So now they're just dating one person. So now what's, what's going to happen? You don't even know the person yet. You're putting so much concentration on this person. Is he calling me back? He's not calling me back. Like it's so much. It's so much. And when you do that, you're not really in touch with the signs. You're not going to be in touch with really what's going on. When you can be able to just chill out and relax and talk to different people. And meet different people and go on, you know, you can go and meet someone and, and go and go have, you know, really honestly, go listen to some music with somebody. Like, come on, go, go talk one, one night. Say, hey, let's go listen to some music. Okay, that's, that's, that's dating. Then the other night, hey, let's, 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 you know what? Let's go to that really cool, you know, whatever hike, roller coaster. Thing. I don't know. You don't have to do it like we're doing it. You're not have to go typical. Let's go to the restaurant. Oh my God, shoot me now <laughs> and do the same thing over and over. So you can switch it up and you can take your time and then you will know who's showing up for you. And I tell people, I said, you're dating until that man literally says these things to you. You're still dating until this happens. So he actually says, will you be my girlfriend? Will you be exclusive with me? Will you want to get off of the dating app? Because I'm not going to get off of the dating app. And then you as a woman have a choice to say yes or no. But you continue on dating until that happens. Okay? You continue on dating. There's no, I had a woman and this happens and this is not going to work. This is why the, the relationship work. She was dating a guy. I don't know how long she was dating him. And then she asked him, are we in a relationship? Okay, if you got to ask the guy if you're in a relationship, no, you're not in a relationship, huh? You're not in a relationship. So you know what the guy said? No, you're not in a relationship, mama. You're not. So we you know what the guy said? Yeah, 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 we're in a relationship. And she's like, oh, okay. And she's also the one that plans all the dates. She's also the one that's always canceling him. He's just like, and she's not happy. So, so you got to take your time. You got to take your time. We talked about it very vaguely, but we didn't, really ask this question in this way, because I think it's going to be really important to differentiate between what is a romantic relationship that's healthy, and then what is an example of a romantic relationship that might be toxic. I know we can look at our values and we can kind of go down that path, but in your own experience and your work that you do, what is the difference between a toxic romantic relationship and then a healthy, strong romantic relationship? So I feel that a toxic relationship is definitely a relationship that you don't feel good, okay? Where you truly feel that anxiety, where you feel really stressed out all the freaking time, where you feel that you can't talk to your partner and you have tried, I swear you have tried everything and it doesn't work. When you feel that you are really trying to be the best person you can, and that person is still <laughs> fighting with you and, 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 and just being a complete jerk, you're in a toxic relationship, hon. <laughs> you're in a toxic relationship. Because if you're in a relationship that doesn't feel right, and, you're, and you are just struggling and struggling and struggling, and you have tried it all. You're in a toxic relationship. And a toxic relationship is when two people actually have no respect for each other. 
Okay. When you have no respect, that's a toxic relationship. So when you are, when you're in a relationship and it's toxic, those are relationships that you say, whatever the hell you want to say, you do whatever you want to do. You, you make excuses for whatever the hell you want to say. You are physical. You're just, just, you don't give a crap. That's toxic relationship. So a positive relationship is a relationship that you truly feel from the bottom of your heart that you are showing up your true authentic self. What is that? What is being your true authentic self? The good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. When you know that you're in a healthy relationship, one of the most important things to have a healthy relationship is that you have to be microscopic, honest with each other. When you're in a relationship and you can honestly be microscopic, honest with your partner, you are actually in a really healthy relationship. And that's the difference. Because if you can't talk to your partner and you can't tell them the truth and you can't tell them, you know why? When you, when, if you can't actually say, if, if your partner did something and it really like made you feel uncomfortable and you don't go there to your partner and you don't able to really position yourself and say, you know what, babe, when you did that, That actually made me feel that like you were going to leave me. You know, when you got to get microscopic honest, that's what truly makes connection. That's what truly keeps your relationship, you know, thriving. And then on top of that, you got to have, you got to make sure, honestly, we're having romantic relationships. Let's have fun. Let's have passion. Let's have sex. I mean, come on, let's, let's do that. And you can do that when you have that honesty and you have that respect for one another. And the conversation that we had, I mean, I could talk to you all day about relationships. Awesome. I know. I, I, I honestly, I'm like, we're going to just keep talking today because I yeah. love your questions. I'm like, thank you. It's such a deep topic. And right now, really a lot is. of people are looking for those relationships or they're looking for how to operate in the whole dating world right now, because it's so easy to ghost people. It's so easy to get a plethora of people on a dating app and basically to run through them. Times have changed since when you were younger, since I was younger, because I didn't have dating apps when I was younger. I didn't have dating apps either. Well, I did have dating apps when um, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. I was on the dating apps. I was I was a woman in my age and dating apps. So that's a whole other story. That's another podcast. Bring me back on. <laughs> <laughs> and so that whole basically shift in how we meet people has really caused us to act a little bit differently too, because now relationships are so easy to get, but they're not the good relationships. They're not the romantic ones ones. that we're talking about. They're just the superficial ones. Like, oh, you know, I have someone on my arm or I got someone in my bed. Or I have someone in my Why are people doing that? Please tell me. I know that you talk to a lot of people too. Like, Mm -hmm. what is up with that, right? I'll give you the answer. Give me the answer. It's because they don't want to be alone. Oh, then you know what? And why don't they want to be alone? Because they don't feel comfortable in, in their own skin. So that's that's the start right there. Mm-hmm. That's the start. Because that's the start. I love that. You know what? Let me tell you something. So my main work, when, when women work with me and they're looking for relationships, my main work is first, having the most amazing relationship with yourself. That's the empowerment work. That's the empowerment work I do. So it really comes down to having the most amazing relationship with yourself. And then in return, having amazing relationships with the people you love. And I love that. Oh, that's so good that you're saying that. You have to start with you. And if people are not wanting to, you know, like you just said, they're having a hard time is because they're afraid to be alone. And you need to find out why you're afraid to be alone. Because you're amazing. You're awesome. Let's figure out. Let's let you, you, trust me, you've just been covered up. You don't know this yet about yourself. So let's get you. You're. I'm telling you, everyone, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> There's only one you out there. <laughs> There's only one you and you bring something. I swear to you, you bring something to the world. You really do because you only have the one you. So you're awesome. Because if you don't feel you're awesome and you don't feel that you want to be alone, all gift, gift yourself the deep work and get under that because, because you're awesome. You really are. You're really awesome. And as we wrap this up, and again, as I said, we can talk all day, but before we say our goodbyes, you have a great wisdom, great knowledge on dating and helping people get into those romantic relationships. And I think that is so important right now. If you can, please share with us any last words and then share with the audience how they can find you. I just want to say this. Listen, nothing's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with you. You're not broken. You're not shattered. You're not crushed. Just, you know what? It happens to all of us. Like we're all humans. Life happens and things happen. And how I explain this is that as life goes on sometimes, 
it's almost like we start getting covered up. Like we get like this, like I have this whole story that I explained this golden, like I told you the golden Buddha. So it's like we get covered up. And then when we start learning and we start like getting curious about our lives and ourselves, then you have an opportunity to just like start chipping away, start chipping away all the stuff that's been covering up. Because for so long, a lot of us, we actually are dimming our light. We're dimming our light. We're dimming our light. So if you feel that you're also dimming your light and you're not feeling good, listen, talk to someone, work with someone, work with someone, find out what's going on. Because you know what? You too have this opportunity to dim your light back up, to dim your light back up and everything's going to be okay. And right now, I just want to say, you know, if, if you are a single woman and this conversation is really resonating with you and you're and you're like, you know what? Like, that's true. I'm noticing like, you know, I am I'm at a place in my life that I do. I do desire to have real alignment and really find an, a great man. And I, I want to show up differently and you doing all that kind of stuff. Well, I actually create it. It's awesome. I created a free training and it's available right now. It's available for anyone. It's, it's truly how to attract devoted masculine men. Because if you're a feminine essence woman, I know exactly what you are desiring. I get it. I got you. And I want women to know that there actually are amazing men out there. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, I help women all the time in this work. So that's how I would say you can find me. And I don't know if you're going to have any show notes or anything like this, but I will make sure that my free training, my free training is available. And then also, I'm all over, you guys. I always bring out a lot of free content. I'm on social media. I'm MS Charlene Byers on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm Level Up for Love on TikTok. I love to have fun. So I'm a little cray cray. And um, so, yeah, I just, I like to, you know, spice it up. But I always say, I always would say, like, first, definitely watch the free training. And if it resonates with you, let's get on the call. Let's have a conversation because I really want to know what's going on. And I will be putting all of your descriptions and all of your links in the description box below awesome. so people can easily check you out, check out your free trainings, follow you on social media. And that's what I do here in Coaching in Session. I bring other wonderful people, other wonderful coaches on to tell about their work and how they can help people because there's so many people hurting and also looking for answers. And there's going to be people who have the answer. My goal is to bring those people to you so you don't have to look too far. I want to thank you so much, Charlene, for coming on. We had a great conversation today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was fabulous. All right, everyone. I'd like to thank you so much for watching the interview with Charlene Byers and myself. As you can see, she is well-versed in what she does. She is an excellent coach when it comes to helping women see the truth, see their value. But it's not so much of saying, hey, you need to step into your femininity because if you're not thinking that way, then it's going to be very hard to step into it. Because if you're thinking in a masculine way, you just have to ask yourself, do you want a masculine man and then to create that tension? Or do you want a feminine man? And most women instinctually, just, you know, just looking at like the history of, of the sexes, they want someone who's going to be able to protect them and be able to provide for them. Most women, they're going to say they want a guy who's over six feet, makes over six figures. It's like that magic six number. But if you add one more six, then it's evil. So what is that last six? I don't know, right? But what I can tell you is that we have an opportunity today that we can make a change into our relationships. We can make a change into our mindset. How do we think? How do we operate and to get the things that we want? Because if you're not good at dating, if you are just kind of going through people and then ghosting them because they're not a good fit or because they gave you too many red flags or they, they do something that they don't want. There's one thing that you have to understand. A woman is going to be submissive to the right man and then that man is going to change for that right woman. Because if a woman tries to be submissive to a man and the man is not going to change for that woman, then that is going to be a toxic relationship in the end because she's going to be strung along by that man, especially if he has a modern mindset. Because if he has a modern mindset, his obligation to you is nothing. He's just going to go through you and then go through the next person the same way. And we have to do our due diligence in who we date and who we give our time to and our body to. But modern culture and social media and all these women strippers who are coming hip hop artists and who are becoming women figures are saying what you can do, what's possible. And I'm not saying that you can't get wifed up if you had a dirty past. But if you're going to be weighing the odds of finding a high value man, if you had a dirty past, is going to be less than if you have a clean past and then a high value man finds you. 
he is going to find that more valuable than someone who has been run through, someone who has put themselves on the internet like OnlyFans, Instagram, just putting provocative pictures and things like that. Everyone has seen the goods. And most men are very territorial with their women. So yes, if you want to step into your feminine energy and look for a masculine man, they're out there. But if you're doing the behaviors that are going to be more masculine and that men don't see as attractive in the long term in a romantic relationship, then you're going to have some issues. And the work that Charlene does is woman empowerment, but then also helping women step into their femininity. Because when you step into your femininity, you shine because then you can attract the men who can change your life. Not saying that you can't change your life for yourself, but do you really want to change your life for yourself? Because most people can. And those women are finding later in life that they want someone, they want to find a partner. And at that point, what do they do? Do they settle? Do they become sugar mamas? I mean, there's so many different things that can occur. And I mean, this conversation, I mean, the conversation that we had with Charlene, there was many twists and turns that we could have taken, but we try to stay on track. Romantic relationship, heterosexual couple, how can we make this work? The way you work is having a feminine woman and a masculine man and having the man lead. So it's not only the woman's responsibility, it's the man's responsibility too. So how can the sexes take ownership to their responsibilities and their roles so they can be a strong, happy relationship? The dynamic is going to start to change, but first we're going to have to start to change our mindset and the way we think about relationships. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me, session at gmail.com, and I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone, take care.